Pantone colors are fantastic, but they aren't always practical or feasible. Sometimes you may need to use CMYK to reproduce a span Pantone spot color as closely as possible. In this video, I'll show you how to create an entire palette of tints from a set of Pantone colors. Create a new document in Illustrator. I prefer a landscape letter size page with inches as my units of measure. Open your swatches panel. Using the trash can icon at the bottom of the panel, delete all of the existing swatches except for none, registration, black, and white. You can do this by clicking on the first one and then holding the shift key down while you click on the last one. Click on the trash can icon to delete the swatches. From the Libraries icon at the bottom of the Swatches panel, choose Color Books, Pantone Plus Solid Coated. A new panel will open up with this library. You use the flyout menu in the upper right hand corner to make the thumbnails larger if you'd like. Choose five colors from this library by clicking on the Swatches in the Library panel. Notice the swatches are added to the swatches panel when you click on them. Once you've selected five, you can close the libraries panel. Now, using the rectangle tool, create a square that is one inch by one inch. The easiest way to do this is by single clicking on the artboard. This will bring up the rectangle options box. Set both the height and the width to one inch and click OK. Move the box to the upper left hand corner of the artboard. You'll be adding a row of text, so leave a bit, a bit of space above that box. From the main menu at the top of the screen, choose Object, Transform, Move. A dialog box will open. In this box, set the horizontal movement to 1.1 inches and the vertical movement to zero. Click the Copy button in the lower left-hand corner of the dialog box. Now we're going to create a row of 10 bo boxes using Object Transform again. The hotkey combination for this menu item is Command D on a Mac or Control D on a PC. I find it much faster to use the hotkey for this step. When you've created the tenth box, move it over slightly so that it's on the page with a similar margin to the first box. Holding down your mouse button, click and drag through all ten boxes to select them. In your menu bar, find the Align buttons. They may be readily available, visible or accessible from the Align link depending on the size of your work area. Choose Distribute Horizontal Centers. This will distribute your boxes evenly across the page with a little space in between them. If you do not have space between the boxes, move the first box to the left and the last box to the right and try again. If it's still not working, count your boxes and make sure you only have 10. Now that you have all 10 boxes nicely lined up on the page, we're going to create four more lines of boxes. We'll again use Object Transform Move. This time we'll use the settings of horizontal 0 and vertical 1.5 inches. Click on the copy button. Now use con Command D on a Mac or Control D on a PC three times to create a total of five rows of boxes. Now 
Now we're ready to create our color swatches. Starting with the top row, click and drag your mouse through all 10 boxes. Choose your first Pantone swatch from the color palette to recolor all 10 boxes. Move to the second row, select all 10 boxes and apply the second color swatch. Continue this process until you have all five rows colored with a Pantone color. Now we're going to open the color panel. The icon for this panel looks like a palette of paint. By default, the options are hidden. Open the flyout menu in the upper right hand corner of the panel and select show options. This will allow us to make tints of the solid Pantone colors. Use your mouse to select the first column of swatches. In the options panel, set the tint value to 10%. Notice how your swatches become lighter when you do. Select the second column and set the tint to 20%. Repeat with the rest of the columns. Change the tint in 10% increments. When you reach the end, you should have tints of 10%, 20%, 30%, 40%, 50%, 60%, 70%, 80%, 90%, and 100% of each of your chosen swatches. Now we're going to label each row with the appropriate Pantone number. Click on the Type tool. Directly above the first row, click and then type the name of the color. You can find the name by viewing the swatches as a list. Make sure you label each row. Now we're going to convert the colors from Pantone colors to CMYK colors. To begin, make sure you have none of the items on your artboard are selected. This will prevent you from changing the color of a swatch accidentally. In the Swatches panel, double click on the first of your Pantone swatches. This will bring up the Swap Swatch Options dialog box. To begin, change the color mode from Color Book to CMYK. Next, change the color type from Spot to Process and uncheck Global. Now click OK. Notice in the Swatches panel a small triangle with the dot in it has disappeared. That's how one way we can tell our color is now a process color rather than a spot color. Repeat the process for the other colors in your palette. We're almost finished, only a couple of steps left. 
First, we're going to label the PMS conversion with the appropriate CMYK values. You can find the CMYK values by hovering over the swatch in your swatches panel. We'll type those in above each row on the right hand side. Lastly, we'll add the newly created colors to our swatches panel. To do that, we'll select each row of colors by clicking and dragging through the center of them. Now, at the bottom of the swatches panel is an icon that looks like a file folder. This is the new color group button. When you click it, a new dialog box will open. Name the color group however you'd like. Then check Create Select from Selected Artwork and click OK. You do not need any of the boxes checked. This will add those colors to your swatches panel. The only thing left to do is to save the file. From the flyout menu in the upper right hand corner, you can choose to save the file as an ASE, an Adobe Swatch Exchange file, or as an AI file, Illustrator's na native format. The ASE file can be loaded into other Creative Cloud programs, so I really prefer this file type. The default save location is in Illustrator's preset files, so it will show up the next time you open Illustrator in the library panel under User Defined.